mind, I just can't seem to find reason to believe that I could break free. Cause you see, I have been down so long. I felt all hope was gone, but as I lift my head, I understand that I should praise you through my circumstances. The shackles on my feet so I can dance. So much pressure fell on me I thought I was gonna lose my mind But I know no. you wanna see If I will hold on to these trials I need you to lift this low Cause I can't take it no more This is my so I can dance I just wanna praise you I just wanna praise you
Hello and good morning. My name is Uchen Ambanizwa. Welcome to the virtual Sunday service of the Charlotte Church. We are a church of almost 500 people and each one of us has a unique story how we met our Creator, exemplifying the power of one God. We are a body of believers where we truly are a family, the people of God. In Psalm 63, David says, Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. We all know that David was a man after God's heart. We also know that David was a man that deeply loves God, and his walk with God brought him so much joy. We have been remembering the joy that God has given us in our relationship with Him. He is our divine creator, the maker of all and God of all gods. As we are being transformed into His likeness to reflect His glory, as the Bible said in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, let us Remember to serve the people of this world with joy and the love of God through Jesus. And it does not matter what nationality or what culture, God calls us to embrace everyone. And with that and, and in that spirit, please keep the Asian community in your prayers. There has been a surge attacks on them, including your children and their elderly, due to being blamed for the COVID-19 outbreaks. Satan is in a pro with pointed, reckless attacks, but he will not win. Let us offer comfort and hope that Jesus offered us so that his death is not without effect in our lives. We are his ambassadors. I hope, we hope, today's service will refresh you, strengthen you, encourage you as we seek to be the light of this world. Again, have a great service and welcome. Good morning, church family. My name is Harrison Ellison, and I will be giving you guys the announcements and prayer requests this morning. Starting off with the prayer requests, our brother Dennis Nafong was admitted to the hospital for an enlarged heart, believed to be connected to COVID-19. Presently, he has about 50% heart function but the doctors are positive that he will make a recovery. He has undergone a battery of tests and will keep you posted, but for now, pray for a full recovery and healing. Next, I'm gonna read a letter from uh, Aaliyah Babel. It's a letter of thanks and a request for continued prayers. Aaliyah says, hi guys, thank you so much for all your prayers, donations and love. I see and appreciate your personal texts and cards as well, but it's been difficult to reply with everything going on. I was able to start immunotherapy treatment in December and have been working on getting my mobility back through therapy. So far, my body has strengthened. I can kick my legs, use my phone, and draw with my right hand. I recently got news from the oncologist that the tumor is no longer visible in scans and they just see some swelling. Thank you so much for your prayers. 
The meals and donations have been a great help to my family as I was able to start treatment, afford doctor's appointments, and have my bath remodeled to be wheelchair accessible and get a power chair so I can move around among other things. We are beyond grateful. I've been hanging in there, but I'm struggling with a lot of nausea, vomiting, along with losing vision in my left eye. Although the scans don't show any signs of tumor, there's no way to tell if I'm cancer-free without surgery. Continue to pray for me. I can get really scared sometimes. Thank you all for being family. Aaliyah. And just as a reminder, if you haven't already signed up for the meal train and you're able to, for the Babel family, please do. The, uh, the information for that will be located in our weekly announcement email. In a short while, we're going to be watching a video on Camp Swamp. Before we do, I'm going to read a short little blurb about the Save Camp Swamp campaign. Camp Swamp is a special place for many of our children. Last year's summer camp had to be made virtual and there's no guarantee yet they will be able to open as usual for the 2021 season. As many of you already know, this has had a significant financial impact and they were in danger of closing. However, Camp Swamp has already been able to raise more than half of the $860,000 needed to meet their financial needs for the next 10 months. You can watch a video message from Jeff and some campers here as well as get more details on steps they've taken and instructions on how to donate to help them reach their goal. Thank you to all who uh, can help camp stay alive for our children and future generations. Our last announcement is an announcement from the elders and the evangelists about February 28th. Brothers and sisters, as you know, we have said that the last Sunday of each month will be devoted to family groups slash house churches. However, with the present crisis in our country and how the disciples are impacted by them, the elders and evangelists have decided to have a family talk on February 28th. There will not be a house church that day. You may decide to meet afterwards as a group because of the subject matter. Here's what we'll be talking about. The kingdom of God. What is it? And how do we live as kingdom people? Be careful not to shipwreck your faith. What do we speak? And what do we keep between us and God? How do we need to repent? We look forward to being together and being moved by God's word and his spirit. Sincerely, the elders and evangelists. Let's go to God in prayer. God, we are so grateful and thankful to have a father that is willing to listen to our needs and our prayers. Would we pray for Dennis and his heart that it can be healed and that he can have a full recovery. Lord, we also pray for the Asian community as there has been a surge in attacks on Asians, including children and the elderly, because of the blame they have received for COVID-19. Lord, this is a wild and crazy time. We pray that your hand is over all of them. Lord, help us with the pressures and the stress brought on by the pandemic and social and political changes. Lord, hear our anxious thoughts and our prayers. Help us to cast our anxieties onto you. Lord, I pray that the hearts of man in this world can see their need for your, your guidance and see that their ways are hollow and unrewarding. Lord, help the hearts of the disciples to get ready and be prepared to serve and to be able to fight in a battle against Satan and the demonic forces of evil that are waging war against you for the souls of man. Lord, we trust you. Lord, we love you. And we pray this all in your son's holy and powerful name. Amen. And now we're going to watch a short video on Camp Swamp. quiet, isn't it? That's how it's been around here for the last year. So we decided to invite a few people to come to camp and we wanted to ask them about their memories, their thoughts, what camp meant to them. And so that's what this video is all about. It's about remembering a place that's really important to all of us. I was listening to the song on the way here. Oh, there they are. <laughs> I remember when we did that. <laughs> yeah, it was hard. 
Hey, there I am. A lot of familiar fellas. Oh, there you are. Oh, Colin. That yeah. was your cabin? Yeah, that was my On cabin. On the video? Yeah. Oh, cool. Shopping cart, shop, oh cockroach. But I missed that this summer. What a special place. There's Jay and Avery. This makes me miss camp. Like a, yeah, like a wounded warrior. Oh, like a mummy. when I did that. So I kind of, I kind of like forgot everything that happens just over summer. Oh, that's Savannah, she's also that's in my Savannah cabin. getting marked up. Oh, there you are. There you oh, are. and there's uh, That was so cute. Oh, I think I remember the pictures from this. Yeah. Swamp ball. That thing ruined some some lives. <laughs> I tried that once, the and then never more. <laughs> it's like I'm too old for that. <gasps> That's <There's> me. <laughs> I love. I posted that picture. I love Jay. I wanted to do that so bad, but you wouldn't let me because I had all these cuts. Oh yeah. The, <laughs> <laughs> the water slide. That looks so uh, fun. Kickball. We should do that again. Seeing it again, just like sparks up even more memories. Right. You know, like you see one picture and it just leaves a whole thread of memories that you, that you made that week. Oh yeah, yeah that's Lauren. <laughs> nice. Oh, I totally remember doing that when I was a counselor forever ago. Oh yeah. Oh, oh that was, that was that? that? That was our cabin. Yeah. That was unfortunate. <laughs> oh, here we go. Mud pit. <laughs> I, there I am, on the ground, in the, in the mud. I want to do this. Mud tug of war? Yes, you I want, want to. to do this? Yes. Really? That's yeah. surprising. That looks, looks fun, fun, but it does hurt when you fall. No, it doesn't. You had your Patriot hat <laughs> on, too. Oh, oh there, there you go. go. <laughs> yeah, not successful. So this was week four. Yeah. The fireworks. Fourth of July. That is, wow. Uh, Get hyped for your first season. Yeah, it'll be your turn soon, too. Oh, that's awesome. Great memories. Special families. Yeah. So Jeff looks young. I was like, <laughs> <he> looks younger. <laughs> Dang. That was awesome. After watching that, how do you feel? Just having those memories, of, like that's my childhood. Camp is, is where I've grown up. Yeah, it's a lot of nostalgia, just like seeing all of like what we've been doing throughout like the past and like just remembering how much fun camp is. Anticipation, just waiting for the future and having so much more fun. Endless memories where, you know, some of my closest friends now, I've met nine, 10 years old and we're you know, becoming disciples now, just growing together spiritually. Even from friends that live in different states, I can just grow because we all have that personal connection of being here at camp. Um, I just love um, how everyone is. They're so friendly, so welcoming. Um, even if you like don't have that many friends outside, you're definitely gonna make friends while you're here. You could just see like the pure joy in everyone's faces in the video, yeah. and I definitely yeah. miss like just how happy it was, you know. There was a year where I didn't want anything to do with God, but I couldn't imagine a summer without camp. Like, like I, I had to had to be here. I think even before the video was starting, I'm already <laughs> I could already feel like I was gonna cry. <laughs> What if I were to tell you that because of financial strains, we are in real trouble of having to close Camp Swamp down, maybe permanently? That is, it's heartbreaking. I, wow. I can't even imagine my life without camp. I don't want to think about that. I... I mean, there's no words, like, the impact that camp has on us, if that goes away, we'll just be like a loss. Yeah, that breaks my heart. <laughs> camp has grown me into the person I am today. And without it... Like, camp is the reason I became a disciple, and I am gonna tear up. Gosh, I don't cry. <laughs> it would be very sad to this be the end of the swamp because it's not only for our generation we were in the campus but our kids generation the future generation after the kids who like have older siblings who have talked about how much swamp has meant to them then these little kids just waiting to come to camp and just not being able to experience that is it's heartbreaking to think like of all things that it would be money to take camp out i think of no <laughs> like that's not an option that's you know, God's going to find a way to do something big and save Swamp. 
Now imagine riding back onto the property for the first time once we open back up. How's that gonna make you feel? Joy, yes. pure joy. <laughs> I'm gonna be so happy that I get to build even new friendships, get closer with people that I already knew, have more fun, um, welcome other kids so that they'll love camp just like I do. Every time I get to camp, just driving down here today, I was thinking of all the great memories. And you walk through that little walkway, you see people playing on the field, and you walk to the dining hall, you hear, yeah. hey Lucy, hey Lola, like, it's just, yeah. it feels like I've come home. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like heaven. You feel emotional, I feel emotional, because I think, he's gotta let that day happen soon. What would you say to anyone who might be in a position to help? Camp is the safest place for so many people. And this place has the ability to change lives, to change eternities. And right now it's money that's stopping that from possibly continuing. And so save camp because you care about those younger than you and that you care for um, not only your family and the families of those around you, but you want to make an impact. If you want to do something and you want to make a, make a difference in this world, this is how you can do it. This is how you can change those around you with, without even knowing them, just by helping to save camp.
fly away. Good morning, brothers and sisters, and welcome uh, again to all of you who are visiting with us today as the Charlotte Church in our virtual service. I'm so glad that you are spending the time with us, and as always, I pray and hope that something that you heard uh, today will help you along in your walk with God. I want to continue speaking about cultivating your joy in the Lord, which is such an important topic. And again, because we praise the things that we enjoy, which is such an important topic because we know we praise those things that we enjoy and we can have such fervor and, and such zeal uh, celebrating, you know, with the things that uh, bring us joy. And how, how much more should we be celebrating our walk in our relationship with God? In the world that we live in today, where God is not getting his proper praise, that those of us who call on his name out of a pure heart should be praising him and enjoying him. But our praise does come from our enjoyment. And as you know, Ron and I, uh, over the past couple of weeks, shared some specifics, some practicals, if you will, on how to begin enjoying your walk with God. And I want to put those uh, to the things that he shared, and the things that I shared together with a few additives uh, in the hope that it will, again, usher you along in your relationship with God. And if you've listened to anything in the news, on the radio, even the things that Uchenna uh, mentioned today in his welcome and in the prayer today with, with Harrison, the things that are happening in our world today, and there's so many more that are happening in our world today, shows us that Satan is on a rampage. And in this dark world that we are in, uh, there are few people that are calling on and reaching out with absolute surrender to the one who could save them. Now, there are many who are calling on the name of God and on Jesus. There are many who are reaching out, but the key is calling on and reaching out with absolute surrender. We cannot serve God and serve man at the same time. We cannot have our feet uh, halfway into the word of God and halfway into the world. It's all or none. And if we want to have the kind of impact that we can, through the Spirit of God, we have to be wholly surrendered to His will and to His Word. And I want to encourage you on that as we move forward. And again, it's I'm talking about joy in the Lord so that God can get His proper praise. And I asked you to consider a question. And that question is, are you in control of your life? And in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, Paul reminds Timothy. He tells him that God did not give us a spirit of fear, but one of power, of love, and of self-control. So he reminds Timothy of that in verse 7. In verse 6, he calls Timothy to action, though. And he tells Timothy, he says, Timothy, I want you to fan into flame the gift of God. So, in verse 6, Paul calls Timothy uh, to action. In verse 7, he reminds Timothy of why he can actually do the call that, that Paul is, has, has called him to, why he can actually act in this particular way, because he has the spirit of power, of love, and of self-control. And what you see there is a partnership between the call to action and the ability to accomplish the call. So God has given all of us the ability to do the things that he called us to. And he reminds Timothy, Timothy, you have the power. You have, through the Spirit of God living in you, you have the spirit of power, 
of love and of self-control. Three things that the world does not have an exercise. Self-control, love, the type of love that Jesus showed us on the cross and in his life and in his resurrection and in the life that he lives right now, seating at, sitting at the right hand of God, interceding for us right now, that type of love. And so he says, Timothy, you can fan into flame. But, but look at this. He says, fan into flame. We know that in order for fire to grow and to rage on, it has to have air. And Paul tells Timothy to flan, fan rather, your gift that God has given you. Fan it into flame. Put more and more air into it so that it combusts and it grows and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Fan it in the flame. The gift that you have, the gifts that you have, we too are to fan them into flame. Why? Because it brings glory to God. It brings light to Jesus. Well, how do you fan it into flame? Well, you put pen to paper. That's one way. And you write down what your gifts are what your talents are. Even if it's one, you write it down. And if you're not sure, ask those that are in your group. If you're not a part of a group, ask your family members. You write it down and you pray about it and you consider how you can stimulate other brothers and sisters on towards love and good deeds using your gift. And so you write it down. You pray about it. You meditate on it and think of all the different ways that your gift can be used to be a blessing and then get to work and God will bless you, not so that you can be seen, but so that you could be a light of Jesus. You will be a blessing, but fan it into flame and it will grow more and more. And again, you will be a blessing. But again, there's a partnership between the call to action in verse six and the ability to accomplish that call. But here's the thing. That if we do not take that to heart, what Paul called Timothy to. And here's the thing. He was talking directly to Timothy. Right. So that's the context there. However, the thing that he shared with him relates to us. All disciples, because we were given the gift of the Holy Spirit at baptism. And that spirit is not one of fear. It is one of power. It is one of love and self-control. So it does relate to us. But here's the thing. If we don't take that on, if we don't allow that to be our experience, if we don't allow that spirit that we've been given to come to life, then we become what is written in Ezekiel chapter 22. And let's read there. In Ezekiel 22, starting in verse 29. And I, I encourage you to uh, read the context of all of this. But here is where it had gotten to. In verse 29, the people of the land have practiced extortion and committed robbery. They have oppressed the poor needy, have extorted from the sojourner, without justice. And I sought for a man among them who should build up the wall and stand in the breach before me for the land that I should not destroy it. But I found none. Now I'm reading from the English Standard Version. But bottom line, God says, I looked for a man to stand in the gap. So I wouldn't have to destroy the land. So God was looking for someone because the leaders, the people had just, let's just say, had just gotten off the rails. And they were extorting people. The, the way that they were treating one another was, uh, let's say, totally ungodly. And so instead of destroying them, God wanted, he looked for someone to stand in the gap, to be the representative, to be his mouthpiece, to be the one that would speak to the people on God's behalf. And it says he found none. 
So if we don't allow that spirit to come to life, if we do not fan into flame the gift that God has given us, this is what we will become. And God will be looking. God is already looking. He may be looking in your neighborhood. He may be looking in your church. He may be looking in your home. He may be looking in your office place. He may be looking in your community, in your neighborhood, looking for someone to stand in the gap, to speak to the people on God's behalf so that he can bless them, so that the people can repent and change, so that he can bless them. But if we don't allow it to happen, God will not find them. And then, of course, as you read the rest of the story, you see what happened. Let us be those men and women uh, that God is looking for and can use. But there's a flip side. There's another side. If we do fan into flame that gift of God or those gifts of God, here's what happens. Then you are open. And you become like Isaiah. Let's look here in Isaiah chapter 6. This is such a great passage. In Isaiah chapter 6. And he says here, Isaiah says here, in the year, starting in verse 1, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up and the train of his robe filled the temple above him stood the seraphim each had six wings with two he covered his face and with two he covered his feet and with two he flew and one called to another and said holy 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 is the lord of hosts the whole earth is full of his glory and the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken from tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go up for us? Then I said, Here I am. Send me. What a, what a great passage. So what you have here is Isaiah actually experienced the Lord in a major way. So he's seeing God and he, he's like, this is the king. He's got the seraphim around, angels, right? Covering his eyes, covering his torso, covering it. Uh, and, and then he's flying with the other two. And he sees this. He realizes I shouldn't be here. This, I'm, un, I'm a sinner. I'm lost. I've got unclean lips. This is above my pay grade. This is above my security clearance. I should not be here. I should not be seeing this. I should not be experiencing this. I'm going to die. Right? Because he is in the presence of God. Now, it's a vision, what have you, but, but he's experiencing something right here that he knows is huge. And maybe you could say he was frantic. But he was aware of the magnitude of this situation. And so as he is saying this, one of the seraphim gets a coal out of the fire of the altar, takes it with one of the tongs and touches his mouth with it. Says your guilt is gone. Your sin has been atoned for. Magnificent things that just happened. Then Isaiah hears the voice of God saying, who will we send? And you have to think, well, what happened? He had to, he had to realize, wait a minute, I've, my sin has been atoned for. My lips are no longer unclean. Now what comes out of my mouth is righteous and pure. Here I am. Send me. And in the same way, 
The blood of Jesus Christ has purified your lips, has purified your heart. Your sin has been atoned for and you are no longer a man or woman of unclean lips. So allow that spirit that you have been given of power, love and self-control dwell in you richly so that you can be one of those that says, here I am, Lord, send me. I will stand in the gap. I will be the one that goes and serves. I will be the one that sits with someone who's in dire need. I will be your mouthpiece. I'll go out into the neighborhood and shine your light and be a great servant. I will be the one that you can depend on. Here I am, Lord, send me. You will then be open, accessible, useful to the Lord. Fan your gift into flame and you will be a blessing. And that's also why I said, you've got to deal with your thorns and break free. Because when you deal with those thorns and Luke talks about them, right? That the thorns choke out the word that's trying to be sown in our hearts. And what are those thorns? The worries of life. The deceitfulness of wealth and the desires for other things. Brothers and sisters, those of you that are listening, you have to deal with the thorns, those things that are choking out the word of God that is being planted in you, making you unfruitful, making your life one that is not one of thriving. What is it? What are the thorns in your marriage? What are the thorns in your parenting? What are the thorns? If, if you right now are a... Um, a high school student, a college student, that, that's a disciple of Jesus Christ, I call out to you because the things that you're seeing right now in the world could really jade your outlook. I call you back to God. Remember your why. Why are you right now today confessing that Jesus is Lord? Remember your why and remember that you're living in a fallen place. And your young heart, your youth, your zeal, your desire to see things better is so needed. Do not let the world you see jade you, but remember the power that you have been given and fan it into flame. And for all of us, the same applies. Let us not let the world jade us, but let's fan into flame the gift that we have been given. But if you deal with your thorns, you deal with those things that are choking you out and you break free. The writer there in Hebrew says, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and run with perseverance. The race marked out for us. Then it says, as you are running that race, it says, consider Jesus the pioneer and perfecter of your faith. So don't just run with perseverance, but as you run, have, have a vision in front of you, and that vision is Jesus. Now, it says throw off everything that hinders. There's some things that hinder us that are not sin, but they hinder our walk with God. The writer says throw them off and the sin that so easily entangles us. Break free from it. So if you deal with your thorns, if you break free from those things, what happens? Again, you're open, you're available, you're reachable, you're present so that God can use you and you will be a blessing and the light of Christ. And what happens again is when you allow those things to happen, you will experience the presence the power and the providence of God. His presence, his power, and his providence. But again, absolute surrender, be in control with the spirit that you've been given, deal with your thorns, break free, you will be open. Ron shared with us just last week out of Revelation chapter two. He says, remember, and let's go there. Revelation chapter 2. He 
He's talking to the church in Ephesus. And in verse 4, But I have this against you, talking to the church. They've done a lot of things great, but he says, I have this against you. You have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember, therefore, where you have fallen. Repent and do the works you did at first. So Ron encouraged us that we need to remember. It's like we need to have an awakening. He says, so remember and repent. Remember where you were. He says, remember the height that you have fallen. So this is what God is saying. Remember when our relationship was so great. Remember the security that you felt when you were with me. Remember the confidence that you had. Remember the faith, how strong your faith was. Remember the intimacy that we had. When you were angry, you came to me. When you were done wrong, you came to me. When you were jaded, when you were hurt, when you were uh, downcast or, or furious, you came to me and allowed me to help you. Remember that height. Remember the joyous times we would have. Remember when you would pray to me and I was there and you felt me. Remember that. Remember how you overcame sin. Remember what you were like before you met me and remember what you were like um, after the appreciation, the gratitude that you felt. He says, remember that height that you've fallen and repent and do the things you did at first. Come to me. That's what God is saying. Come to me. Let's go to him and allow him to lift us up. So it says, remember those things. Remember your why. Remember when you were baptized into Jesus Christ and you were like, my sin is forgiven. My name is in the book of life. And you say, well, I, I think about that all the time, but yeah, it doesn't do much for me. Well, here's what that means. The thorns are still surrounding you. Yeah. And you haven't fanned into flame the gift. See, when we fan into flame the gift that God has given us and we deal with those thorns and we break free now, our minds are clear. Our hearts are clear. Our direction becomes much more clear. Remember and repent. And you see the, the car there. So if some of you are like, okay, repent, and I see a truck there, I'm not sure what's happening. Well, just look at the tire tracks. It's turning around. And I, I put an arrow there so you can see what uh, I was pointing to. I'm pointing at the tire tracks. Turn around. Repent. Do the things that you did at first. We have to do that in our marriage, right? So that our love continues to be. We have to cultivate our love and joy in our marriages. In a much more deeper way, we have to do that in our walk with God. But man, how glorious it can be. And when we do that, brothers and sisters, when we, when we allow the spirit that we've been given, the spirit of power, love, and of self-control, when we deal with the thorns in our life, we deal with the worries, we deal with the deceitfulness of wealth. We deal with the desires that we have that are other than pleasing God. When we break free and, 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 and throw off all the things that hinder us uh, and the sin that so easily entangles, when we remember the height that we've fallen from, when we remember what it was like when we were wholly connected with God, when nothing came in between us, when we refused to allow the world or Satan or sin to get in between there when we repent because the Bible tells us in Acts that repentance brings refreshment right that that's what it tells us and we want that refreshment when those things happen then we can be revived we can live again we can flourish we are renewed and it's a great thing. And that is where we're, we're headed. That is where we want to be in this dark world that we live in. I pray again that the things that you, you've heard today, just one thing. And go after it with all of your heart. Find your joy. Cultivate that joy in the Lord so that God can get the proper praise. Fan into flame 
those gifts. How exciting this week can be for you as you write down your gifts and think about how can I use my gifts to be a blessing for others and watch what God does. To God be the glory. Enjoy our, our communion that we're about to have right now and have a great rest of your day. Amen. First Peter chapter one, verses three through 23. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who spoke of the grace that was to come to you searched intently and with the greatest care, trying to find out the time and circumstances to which the Spirit of Christ in them was pointing when he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you, when they spoke of the things that have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even angels long to look into these things. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Be self-controlled. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Since you call on a father who judges each man's work impartially, live your lives as strangers here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from this empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him, you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him, so that your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for your brothers, love one another deeply from the heart, for you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God.
hurting and broken within Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin Jesus is calling Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling Oh, come to the altar The Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was bought with The precious blood of Jesus Jesus Christ Leave behind your regrets and mistakes Come today, there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling And trade them for joy From the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling Oh, come to the altar The Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ Oh, what a Savior Isn't He wonderful Sing hallelujah Christ is risen Bow down before Him For He is Lord of all Sing hallelujah Christ is risen arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with Precious blood of Jesus Christ Oh, 
bear your cross as you wait for the crown. Tell the world of the treasure you found.